Dark mode isn't just about flipping a switch and making everything black, right? It's about contrast, readability, and creating an environment that you actually want to look at for over eight hours a day. Today, I will be breaking down what my perfect dark mode setup looks like with every single color choice over here, right? Every single design decision and why all of it matters. Now, before I get into that, here's a look at what the setup currently looks like. So this is the browser that I'm using. I'm using the Zen browser with carefully crafted spacing so that different UI elements don't look too cramped together, making the entire experience just feel horrid, right? That along with the terminal over here. So here we're using a simple color scheme with pastel colors, which I will get to later on. The reason why I'm using these colors instead of something a little bit more monochrome or a little bit more saturated. So this is what the terminal looks like. After that, we have VS Codium itself. So this is going to be my text editor where I will be doing most of the programming and coding. As you can see here, this is what that looks like. Then next up, we have Discord. So any communication that has to be done, that goes through Discord, which is what Discord looks like over here. And then if I had to listen to music, that is going to be through Spotify. So this is Spotify with a custom theme. This is the sleek theme that I have changed the colors for, which allows me to basically change the colors of Spotify so that it looks something like this. And after that, here, there is a list of applications over here, terminal applications that you would most likely be using. This is HTOP, this is ASCII Aquarium, this is CMatrix, of course, and then this one is actually called Typeioka. So this is a typing test app where basically all you have to do is just type a bunch of sentences and it'll give you the stats of your typing speed and whatever else that goes into a typing test, right? That is what is inside of this workspace. Now, this setup that I've just shown you is actually one of my daily drivers. So I've been refining this one for months and it hits three goals, right? It's easy on the eyes during long coding sessions. It's aesthetically cohesive. So all the colors tie into each other. None of them are quite conflicting with each other. That's something. And they're basically functionally perfect. So let me walk you through every single layer that we've discussed earlier, or that I've shown you earlier, and let me explain every decision, every tool choice, everything else that I thought about when I chose these particular tools. Okay, so first of all, we're going to have to talk about the wallpaper because in any rice, okay, it doesn't matter if it's a monochrome rice, if it's a noir themed rice, which is actually what this rice is called, right? This rice, I have called it noir. This is the current theme that I'm running. But basically, it doesn't matter what your rice is all about. So it could be something like Cyberpunk, it could be Everforest, Grubbox, doesn't matter. The wallpaper is going to be the most key and defining feature and striking aspect of your entire rice. So basically, if you're able to find a theme that you like, and then you're able to find a wallpaper that goes really, really well with it, then pretty much 80% of your work is done. So this is another one of those 80-20 perspectives where 20% of the work is actually just finding the wallpaper, which does which gets you 80% of the results of a good rice. So which is why choosing the right wallpaper is extremely important. Now, when it comes to choosing wallpapers, I have a certain style that I go for, especially when I'm using a dark theme, okay? I always tend to go for wallpapers that have more geometric or abstract themes to them. So as you can see here, for this lines wallpaper, this looks super minimal, super clean, absolutely perfect, right? That is, there's almost nothing that's wrong with this wallpaper. Right. If you were to choose this wallpaper for an e-ink theme, it would work perfectly fine, perfectly amazingly, actually. Then if you were to use it for something like a monochrome setup, something like this one, for a dark mode setup like this one, that would also work extremely well. And the general consensus with these sorts of abstract minimalist wallpapers is that they go no matter what theme that you use. You could even be on Windows or Mac OS, and because their accent colors are customizable to a certain extent, right? It doesn't really matter what wallpaper you're using as, as long as you're using something like this. So you could have a blue accent, you could have a red accent inside of Windows or Mac OS, let's say, and this wallpaper wouldn't really be conflicting with that because the accent color is what stands out in all of your applications. Now, if on the other hand, if you really zoned into one accent color and then you decided that this was going to be the one that you were going to use, then of course you'd have to pick a wallpaper that depends on that certain accent color, if you get what I mean, right? So this wallpaper, these kinds of wallpapers, they're accent color agnostic, which means that you can use whichever colors that you want inside of your waybar or inside of your app launcher or your logout menu, basically wherever else you can use whichever colors that you want. And these wallpapers will not conflict with them, which is why I choose wallpapers like this. So apart from lines, I have a couple of other wallpapers, something like this geometry one, which has, which is 
really created in the similar vein to the other one. So this one is abstract too. It just has a bunch of patterns, something that you would see inside of Google's wallpapers, probably a Google Pixel wallpaper, seems something like that. Then of course, apart from this, we have a more light themed wallpaper. So if I really wanted to create a striking effect with a theme, with a dark theme like this one, I would pick something like this Duotone wallpaper. Basically on the top hand side, we have a pure white background. So if we just used a color picker on this, as you can see, this is basically white. Okay, F2, F2, F2. That's a white color. And if we go down all the way here, it's 0, 02, 0, 02, 0, 02. So that's basically white and black. So this is a really, really striking wallpaper in terms of sheer color composition. And after that, we have dark waves as well. So this one is slightly inspired by both Windows and Mac OS styles in terms of the wallpaper. But regardless, this one looks extremely good as well. This is another kind of wallpaper where you can use it on any system. It doesn't matter how, even if it's on a TV or if it's on your laptop or your phone, this is a wallpaper that would just go anywhere. And that's why I'm using it for this noir theme specifically. Then after that, we also have Night Sky. Now this one, I've used this wallpaper in the past before, and it's good and all, but it does it just pales in comparison when you compare it to the other wallpapers that we have here. And then of course, this is another abstract material design inspired wallpaper, which I called Shade. So this one looks pretty good as well, but my favorite out of all of these has to be lines, geometry, and dark waves. So in that particular order, that's my top three when it comes to wallpapers. And that's the reason why I chose the wallpapers in the first place. The next thing we're going to be talking about is Waybar, right? So Waybar, as for Waybar and the other UI elements that you see here from the notification daemon to the app launcher that we have here to the lock screen. This is what the lock screen looks like. And of course, the logout menu, as you've seen earlier, this is what all of them look like. Now, all of these, if you notice, they're following a certain color scheme, but it's not a color scheme that you've seen before. It's not because I have actually made this one like custom all by myself. Now, the reason why I picked this particular color scheme is twofold. Okay, I have a couple of reasons why here are two of them. So if I were to just show you the colors that I'm using for Waybar specifically, I would be inside config, Waybar, colors, custom, and that would be inside monochrome.css. And if you're wondering why I have all of these different folders when it comes to my Waybar colors, well, it's because this setup that I'm using over here is actually part of a bigger custom theme switcher. So if I wanted to switch the theme from something like Noir to an e-ink setup, this is basically the light version of the Noir setup that you saw earlier. This is the light version. So if I were to open NWG look, change color scheme to default, as you can see here, this is the light version. And if I open a browser, this is what that looks like. This is what the file manager looks like, so on and so forth, right? There you go. This is what the light version of Noir looks like. And apart from that, I can also change the theme to whichever other theme that I want. If I wanted Everforest, I could do that. I could pick a different wallpaper and then, hold on. Yeah, I could pick a different wallpaper and then I could have my entire setup switch to that particular wallpaper. And that is why there are so many different folders here along with all of these CSS files. And if you want to learn how to make something like this for yourself, if you want to learn how to make a custom theme switcher like this one, but basically all you have to do is just load up your favorite themes inside of a folder and then switch between them at will, right? So if you want to learn how to do that, not just copy and paste someone else's dot files and hope for the best that your setup never breaks. If you want to learn how to do this so that not only do you learn a new skill, but then you're also able to troubleshoot in case something breaks. If you want to learn how to do this, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out Hyper Accelerator, which is a program where I teach you how to do this. Right now, let's switch the theme back to Noir so I can show you this. Now let's go here. And these are the colors that I'm using. They're following a certain pattern because they have to abide by the rules of the theme switcher that I have configured. But apart from that, I have purposefully used, as you can see here, constant colors, constant, what do you call them? Values for red over here. So B0, 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 these two values, they are very close in the sense that if you take a look at these colors, you wouldn't necessarily be able to immediately tell that they're different colors. Like if you looked at it from afar, basically the point I'm trying to make here is I went with pastel colors simply because monochrome colors, like truly monochrome colors would be too hard to tell the difference between. So you're going to have to find the right balance between finding good monochrome colors, as well as finding colors that you're still able to see. Now, previously, what I had done was these colors that you saw right here, they were all grayscale, just completely grayscale. So they, they were from the brightest to the darkest. But 
When I tried to use this insert inside of my terminal and inside of my code editor, I practically could, couldn't see a single thing. It was like somebody had turned the lights off and forgot to turn them back on. And that is not what you want because you actually want to be able to see what's going on when you're typing stuff. So which is why I instead chose to come up with a completely different and new theme that is much better than just pure monochrome or a theme that is just completely saturated, like Dracula, for example. It's fun to look at for some time, but then after that time, your eyes really start to get strained, which is why using pastel colors not only increases the lifespan of your eyes, your eyes will thank you, not just that, but then they're also less distracting, so you're able to actually focus on the elements of the code that actually matter. That is why I used pastel colors over here. And even in the usage of these pastel colors, right, these colors, they're just the right amount of desaturated, if you will, right? I have turned down the, the saturation on these colors only to the point where they're still visible, they're still readable, they still, still look really good without them being too much of a distraction. And that is what went into me picking this exact color scheme for Waybar for my app launcher, as well as the notification daemon and everything else. All of which, by the way, I teach you how to make and I teach you how to create for yourself inside of the program, which is the first link in the description. So if you want to learn how to make something like this, you can go ahead, click that link and check it out. Now, for the next one, take a look at the Rafi menu over here, along with the pop-ups. So for Rafi, I have specifically configured it to have this sort of accent color so that it's still visible without it just being a pale highlight, right? I've actually made it into a contrasting color with this text color over here being the color of the background, along with this blue color that would just be the accent color that's used mainly over here. And not just that, but I've also added a border. Now, if you've noticed inside of macOS's UIs, right, whether it be iOS or macOS, they do this really absolutely, you know, <laughs> I have, okay, it's basically a really fantastic thing that they do where they add this sort of really faded outline that makes it look like a card and makes it look like a really good card. Now, for shadows, you should be actually able to add shadows to layers on Hyperland, but for some reason, they don't, this Rafi version isn't necessarily working with that. So right now I, I do not have shadows enabled for this layer, but regardless, in order to simulate the effect of there being a shadow and in order to create contrast between the background as well as the Rafi menu itself, I've added a border over here that's just slightly lighter than the color that's being used for the background, which gives you this really cool outline effect. And then after that, there's also the different pop-ups that I've configured. So there is a brightness and a volume pop-up over here, which also has that same outline effect. Here, it's not that noticeable, but if I change the wallpaper to something different, something like shade, yeah, as you can see, the outline also looks really good here. It used to be a blue color before, but I realized that you can make it look much, much better if you just change this outline color to something more of a muted color, but then still part of the same color scheme. So that is what went into making this notification along with this Rafi menu over here. And not just that, but there's also other functionality that I've added, like if I change the mode, okay, hold on, let's just, okay, there you go. So with nightlight, this is a separate feature that I've added, but basically I can change between the nightlight filter, I can turn it on or off depending on the time of day, that, that can be something that's configured, or I can just turn it on at will. That's another feature that I've added. Along with that, there's also, lastly, we're going to be covering the browser. So we saw the browser earlier for just a second, but if we open it again, this is what you see. Now, the reason why it looks like this is because we haven't selected prefer dark inside of NWG look. So if we set that to prefer dark here, and if we hit apply, if we go here, and if we open the browser again, as you can see, this is what it looks like. Now, the browser that I'm currently using is Zen Browser, and having used it for some time, I have to say, this has to be literally the best browser, the best looking browser ever, hands down. This has to win best looking browser ever award for so many different reasons. Oh, okay. Now, to actually get into the different reasons why, we're going to have to take a look at the extensions that this thing allows you to install, because you can configure pretty much every single part of it. So by default, if you notice here, the forward and back buttons, right, forward and back, you, you're not able to exactly remove them. But then with Zen, with the different mods that Zen browser allows you to install, you can get rid of that, you can get rid of the reload button, you can get rid of so much else and just make your browser look so much more minimal that it's, it's crazy. 
It's literally freaking crazy. So let me show you the mods that I have over here that allows me to do this with the Zen browser. So I have a couple ones over here. I, I could definitely add a lot, lot more, but that would just start to slow down the browser and then add a lot of bloat that's unnecessary. So I've just kept it to five, six extensions for now. So how many are here? Three, six, yeah, six. First one is of course, back forward, always hidden. So I've hidden those two buttons over here and just added a new tab button for symmetry with this thing and this thing, right? Just makes the top bar look more symmetrical. Then we have hide extension name. So if I were to use an extension like night tab, where you can change the new tab, but then it shows a little card over here, a little box that says night tab extension, blah, 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 so on and so forth. In order to hide that, I just have this hide extension name extension, this mod, then nav bar margin. This is to basically add more padding between the URL bar along with this address bar area, basically to add more padding Then no top sites. So if I open the URL bar, you see this fantastic animation, which is actually configured with a different mod, but here there are no top sites. By default, you would see a bunch of different top sites like Reddit and YouTube and whatnot, but this extension disables that. Then smaller compact mode. So this is going to reduce the height of the compact sidebar. If I were to turn that off, this is the height of the normal sidebar, but it just looks much better with it being more compact. Then of course, the holy grail of extensions of mods for Zen is Transparent Zen. So here in Transparent Zen, you're able to make the Zen browser look as good as this one right with transparency enabled so you can change different colors over here if you wanted to let's say you wanted to just change the color here you wanted to basically make this fully transparent you can do that otherwise you can let the transparency be dictated by the theme that's currently in use that's going to be the gtk theme so here we have transparent sidebar transparent glance so on and so forth more transparency options and as for the url bar animation there should be something here okay mm, let's see here url bar where is it mm. let's okay wherever it is right it's basically an extension a part of this mod which allows you to get this sort of animation as soon as you press Control l which is going to access the url bar so i can press that here but then it won't give me the same animation i'll have to press Control l in order to access this animation along with this url bar over here and that is all for all of the apps that I have configured to work fantastically with this dark mode. In conclusion, basically, the goal with this setup for me wasn't just to make things dark. It wasn't just to create a toggle, but to just really revamp the entire setup in order to make it something that's completely different. It's creating an environment that was easy on my eyes, aesthetically pleasing and functional. So every element works together and nothing fights for attention. This setup lets me code for over 10 hours a day without eye strain, and that is the point. If you want to learn how to build Hyperland setups just like this one from scratch, right? If you want to learn how to make custom theme switchers like this one, along with wallpaper switchers like this one from scratch, where I teach you how to write all of the code by yourself, right? If you want to learn how to do that, not just copy my colors, but then also understand the design principles behind every choice, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out Hyper Accelerator. It's over 10 hours of training where I teach you the complete process. If you liked the video, hit like. If you loved it and want to see more like this in your feed, hit subscribe and I will see you next time. Stay rising. Mwah.